In our previous video, we set up a test case in preparation for doing some unit testing with Makito. If you haven't seen that before seeing this video, I recommend that you take a look at that video. It's called Unit Testing Part 1. In this video, we're going to take a deeper look at Makito. First of all, we've used our behavior-driven design to create some methods, given that plant service is populated with plant DAO when filtered with red, then verify two results. We're going to start with the given or the preconditions of our test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, say plant service, plant service equals new plant service. This is the class that we're testing. Uh, control shift O, organize imports. And now I'm going to control one over plant service and I'm going to convert this local variable into a field so that we can use it in multiple methods. In other words, that takes the declaration out of this method and puts it up to the top of my unit test. Okay, here's where things start to get really, whoops, here's where things start to get really interesting. Uh, for this plant service, whoops, plant service, for this plant service, uh, to do any testing on it, we're going to need to populate this iPlant DAO. But the trick is there are no classes that implement iPlant DAO because frankly we haven't made them yet and we don't need to. If I do a control T, a type hierarchy, uh, we'll see here's our interface and no class is implemented. But that's okay. The point of a unit test is to test one Java class in isolation without dependencies on others. So what I need to do is I need to import static. It's an interesting one. Uh, org dot Makito dot capital M Makito dot star that's implementing all the static methods of that Makito class. One of them is this entering me interesting method called mock. I take mock and I'm going to put inside of mock the type that I want it to mock which in this case is that I plant DAO dot class. Okay. So let me put some comments here because I know this is going to get confusing. A mock object is, is a shell of an object that will do whatever we want. Okay, now here's the other interesting thing. Remember in Eclipse, Control-1 is a hotkey that says, hey, what do you think I need to do now? Help me out. I hold control one and I'm going to say assign to new local variable and watch what happens. This command will take whatever the method returns and assign it to a variable of the appropriate type. So my question to you is, what does mock return? We'll take a look. It returns whatever type we passed into it. It, returned in, it returns in this case a plant DAO. Okay, good. We're getting closer. Now the next question is, what does plant service do with this plant DAO? And let's take a look. Plant service is going to invoke the fetch plants method on this DAO. So we need to make an implementation of fetch plants. Okay, let's try that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say when, and when is another Makito method, plant DAO dot fetch plants. Okay, dot then return. Oh, I need to return a list of plants, don't I? So let's say all plants. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm programmatically saying when this method is invoked on this shell of an object, return whatever collection is all plants. Okay, well we need a method that's going to create and return a list of plants. Just a dummied up list because again we're testing without dependencies. We don't care what's in the database. We want a fixed set of inputs so that we can verify that we get a predictable set of outputs. So I might say, uh, I might make a new method that's called create plant list. And you know what? To save time, I've already done that for us. I'm going to run down here and borrow one just because it was a lot of typing. Uh, I'm going to borrow a method that I've already made. It'll save about seven minutes off this video. And I'm going to paste it, but I want you to look at what the method is doing. Construct plant list, control shift O to organize imports. Uh, you see what it's doing is it is constructing a set of four plant objects and it's adding them to this list called all plants. And I save. 
So it's a predictable set of plants. Uh, it's DTO. It's not pulling from the database or anything. It's a set of four known plants. So what I'm going to do up here now is I'm going to say, I'm going to invoke this method, construct plant list. I'll let Eclipse do some work for me. I'll just start typing and control space. Okay, once again, control one and assigns a statement to new local variable will take uh, what comes out of this construct plant list and assign it to a new local variable. And that is going to be a plant list. So we'll go ahead and call it plant list. There we go. And that now for the then return, we'll say plant list. Whoops, no, 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 no. Cancel. Okay, plant list, just like so, and save. Okay. A known set of hard-coded plants. Okay. Tell the mock object to return our known set of hard-coded plants when requested. Now what we need to do is we simply need to, one moment, associate the mock object with the object we are testing. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, plant service oops, dot set plant DAO and then our mocked plant DAO and we're all set. That takes care of our given. Okay, so now let's go up and let's go to the when, when filter with red. Okay, I'm going to go to plant service and which method are we testing on plant service? Let's remember. On plant service, we're testing the method called filter plants. Filter plants is going to call the DAO and invoke that fetch plants method that we've just mocked out. Then it's going to iterate over that collection of plants and filter it down by a certain uh, text that we've provided. By the way, if you're just joining in on this video, I created this little snippet in a previous video. It's on the playlist for enterprise web development if you're curious what we're doing here. Uh, okay, so back to test plant search. What I'm going to do is say plant service dot filter plants and I'm going to pass in red. Okay, I am anticipating that we're going to get two results from this because I have the eastern red bud and I have the uh, red maple. I'm anticipating that both of those are going to return. So I save. Now one more thing we're going to need to change. Uh, what's it actually looking at in that filter? Uh, it's looking at, just a moment and I'll show you, so if we go to plant service, it is looking at the two string from this plant DTO and I am going to need to make a little change to that two string. I'm going to need to have it return genus, there we go, genus and then a space and then species and then a space and then whoops almost there, and then cultivar, and then a space, and then common. What that will do is it will find the word red in any of those four attributes because it's actually comparing what gets returned from this two string with whatever our filter text is. And in this case, our filter text is this word red. So as long as it's in either the genus species uh, cultivar, or more importantly here, common name, uh, it will get successfully returned. So plant service dot filter plants red. Now, how do we know what's going to get returned from filter plants? Well, let's control one again, our magic key, and let's say assign statement to new field. This will return that list of filtered plants. So we're saving it here as a field. In other words, something that's not declared within a method, so it's accessible to all methods and we're calling that filter plants. Okay, that's all good. Now let's go to the verify. Let's say assert equals, and I'm gonna say two comma, and then filter plants dot size. Okay, and save. And believe it or not, at this point, we're ready to test. So control M, and let's right click, and let's choose run as and JUnit test again. I'm hoping for green and we get green. That's good news. 
Now you might say, gosh, that seems really fast. Are you sure it actually tested? Well, guess what? We can debug a JUnit test. I simply snap the breakpoint right here on line 24, and then I go back to test plant service again. Right click this time, choose debug as, and then JUnit test. And we can slow it down and watch it work. I'll go ahead and go to debug perspective. And I will F5, this is Eclipse, so I will F5 into given. Okay, and this will walk us through the entire mocking step. Okay, and then return, when filter with red, then verify two results. Let's take a look up in variables. What is in our filtered plants? We have two elements. I'll expand here. We have two elements. One of them is Circus canadensis redbud. The other is red maple. So we see that sure enough, our filter did work. And as soon as I choose F6, and we'll go ahead and tell it to, to resume, uh, we'll go back to Java EE view and we see that we get a green bar. There we go. Okay, one more test we'll do. Um, remember I said that Mockito can also verify that a method was called on the mocked object with certain arguments. So we can say verify, and this is a Mockito method. Uh, verify, I'm going to say, let's say I'm going to need to change the scope of our mocked object a little bit in that case. Let me just control one on this and say convert local variable to field. So we'll say, oh, okay, I think we got it. Good, good, good. Okay, um, verify plant DAO dot uh, fetch plants, okay, times one. So that verifies that this method was called exactly one time. Okay, and actually I realized I did mess up the syntax just a little bit. It should look like this, verify plant DAO times one and then fet dot fetch plant. So I put the, uh, whoops, did it again. Uh, there we go. So it looks like I put the arguments in a little bit uh, strange order. This is especially helpful when you have multiple calls to a method, maybe with different parameters on that mocked object. But nonetheless, it's, this is just a demonstration to show that Makita will keep account of how many methods are called or what methods are called and with uh, what arguments as well. So let's save. Control M, and let's run this test one more time. I'm going to go ahead and run it without the debugger, so we can just take a look. Run as JUnit test. Fingers crossed, hold your breath, and I expand, and we see test filter plants. Uh, everything looks good. We can I could step through it again with the debugger, but we do see that there are no errors, no failures. Everything looks good. Just for SNGs. Let's change this to some ridiculous thing like times three, and verify that that. That, that should fail because we only called it one time. Let's verify that indeed if I put in an invalid, invalid uh, argument that it will fail. Sure enough, it does fail. And not only does it fail, but it tells us where it failed. Okay. Wanted three times. You see it's telling us that this, uh, this method call was desired three times, but it did not get uh, it did not get called three times. So we have failures one in this case. So with that, I'm going to control M. I'm going to turn this back to a valid unit test that will pass, commit. And uh, in our future videos, we're going to take a look at code coverage with Echolemma uh, and hopefully take a look at JUnit Flux as well. I look forward to seeing you then.